log laws. Okay, the first log law, and I'll prove this one, is that log to the base a of m times n is equal to log to the base a of m plus log to the base a of n. Now, the really important thing is that those things inside the brackets are multiplied. The proof, all, all these proofs come from the index laws. So we're going to say let a to the x equal m and a to the y equals n. Therefore, if we multiply those two numbers, um, we use the index laws to get m times n is equal to a to the x plus y. Now, if we take log to the base a of both sides, um, we'll see that log to the base a of m times n is x plus y by definition, um, and then substituting back in for x and y, um, because if a to the x equals m, then x is log to the base a of m, and if a to the y equals n, then y is log to the base a of n, and we've proved the first log laws. Now, all the proofs for the uh, log laws that are listed on the screen there um, follow along exactly the same lines using the index laws. So we really have three, well, we actually have four. We'll do the change of base one a little bit later on. Um, so when we multiply inside the log, um, inside where we're taking the logarithm of, we add the logs. When we divide inside where the logarithm's being taken, we subtract the logs. And if we have something to the power of P, then we pull it out the front. Um, that leads to a couple of interesting results that log to the base a of 1 on n is minus log to the base a of n. That comes from the index laws where a to the minus n is 1 on a to the n. And log to the base a of 1 is 0. Well, that was covered in our other lessons on the definitions of the logs. And that's, of course, because um, a to the 0 is 1. All right, how do we use this in questions? So a typical question would be something like this. Simplify without using tables or a calculator. Log to the base 2 of 16 plus log to the base 2 of 8. Now you have to recognise that straight away as being the use of the first log law. We've got, we're adding two logarithms, so we can change that to be a multiply. Now of course what we're hoping is the thing inside the brackets there, 16 times 8 is some power of 2. And 128 is 16 times, two, uh, 16 times 8, which is of course 2 to the 7, so we can say the answer is 7 by definition. Uh, and that's a lot easier than, you know, changing base, when we do learn the change of base law, uh, working out each of those different logarithms and, and multiplying them. So when you see a, a plus, you're thinking multiply, if you see a minus, you're thinking divide, and then if you've got a power, you're pulling it out the front and seeing what goes on from there. I'm not going to do a divide one because they're roughly the same. In our second example, we're going to little, be a little bit harder here. This is a power one. Uh, log to the base 10 of x is a half outside of log to the base 10 of a quarter. Now, when I say the half out the front of the log to the base 10, I'm thinking about using the third log law and bringing that power up the front. And it just so happens that a quarter to the half, remembering that anything to the power of a half is the same as square rooting, becomes log to the base 10 of 1 on the square root of 4. Now we can evaluate the square root of 4, which makes it a half. Now, log to the base 10 of x is equal to log to the base 10 of a half. Well, by definition, that means that x is equal to a half. What we're really doing there, of course, is um, doing 10 to the power of on both sides, the inverse function to the logarithmic function. 